Today we are going to discuss chain reaction mechanism, re-entry phenomena, circus movement is a basis for ventricular fibrillation or VF. Basically we have started our uh, lectures about causes of death after acute coronary occlusion or causes of death after acute myocardial infarction or heart attack. We have discussed that the most important causes after acute coronary occlusion include cardiogenic shock, acute pulmonary edema and ventricular fibrillation. In our lecture about ventricular fibrillation we discussed that basically ventricular fibrillation is the uncoordinated uh, contractions of different parts of the heart muscles in which there is no proper pumping in which the different parts of the heart muscles they contract ir irregularly they are not contracting uh, synchronously and they are not co contracting uh, in coordination with each other so there is no proper pumping of the blood and there is no proper uh, cardiac output and there is sort of cardiac arrest and this is a very lethal condition which can lead to basically death in few minutes if it, it is not reverted. Then we discussed a few mechanisms which are basically necessary uh, which are basically provided by the acute coronary occlusion like increase and decrease in the potassium similarly uh, sympathetic stimulation and few other things which those uh, uh, subs, uh, criteria which were basically required by ventricular fibrillation and were fulfilled due to acute coronary occlusion. So what are basically now the mechanisms due to which uh, those criteria, those uh, changes which occur due to acute coronary occlusion that are fulfilled and that lead to ventricular fibrillation. So we have uh, initially to understand the norm normal contraction of the heart and normal conduction of the impulse in the heart and then we will understand uh, what is basically the uh, causes, what are the causes of ventricular fibrillation. So normally in a normal heart the impulse, the, uh, the impulse basically starts in the S anode, it, it basically at activates the atria, the atria contracts then the impulse is a, a little bit delayed in the atrioventricular node and then it goes into the Purkinje fibers and in the ventricles and then the ventricles contract and this leads to coordinated contraction of the ventricular uh, mus uh, muscles and both the ventricles contract simultaneously in coordination with each other which lead to uh, blood pumping and cardiac output. Now this coordination, this uh, synchronous contraction of the ventricles, it is basically disturbed in the ventricular fibrillation. Now why it is it disturbed or what are the uh, things or what are the changing uh, changes which basically lead to disturbance of the impulse transmission and which basically lead to ventricular fibrillation. So normally when the impulse for the contraction of the heart is generated in the S anode and it travels through the Purkinje fibers, it normally die out. It normally die out. So when the whole of the heart has been activated, the whole of the heart has been activated, then there is a certain time in which there is a refractory period. So in the refractory period, no amount of impulse, no amount of current can basically activate or uh, contract uh, the uh, basically the ventricles. So when the when the impulse which was generated in the S anode it has died out after traveling through the Purkinje fibers, the heart muscles, the ventricles have basically entered the refractory period and in the refractory period no amount of impulse can activate the heart muscles. Now there are a few changes, there are a few changes which are basically required if those changes occur that impulse, the impulse which normally die out will not die out rather it will re-enter. It will re-enter a phenomena called re-entry. Now what are those changes? Basically the changes are if we increase the pathway, if this pathway through which the impulse normally travels and then die out, if this pathway is prolonged, if the there is a long pathway or the pathway is prolonged, then if the refractory period is shortened, if the refractory period, the time in which the heart cannot be activated even uh, with, a, uh, with a larger amount of impulse or a big current, if that period, in, if that period that once heart has been activated and then for a certain 
period of time it will not be activated if that period the refractory period is shortened then the current can re-enter and finally if the the velocity the speed with which the impulse is coming from the SA node then through the AV node and then the Purkinje fibers if these the speed the velocity of the impulse is decreased then it can all lead to re-entry phenomena it can all lead to re-entry phenomena and it can also lead to circus movement it can also lead to circus movement now if in an experiment if in an experiment we stimulate the heart and we try to intrude uh, to we we try to make uh, the re-entry phenomena and we try to make the chain reaction mechanism and we want to introduce the circus movement then the heart can be uh, in then the heart can enter into ventricular fibrillation now normally normally the impulse basically start here and when this has been shown uh, the impulse is being shown here with this diagram that the at the SA node the impulse starts now this this portion of the heart is in the refractory period when the impulse has traveled to this uh, place from it has started here initially this place uh, this portion of the heart for example this portion of the heart was in refractory period and it could not be activated once it was activated then it could not be activated for certain certain period of time and after some time the impulse has traveled to this point and this portion cannot be activated for certain period of time which is basically refractory period and after some time when the impulse has died out here somewhere here in the muscles this whole of the heart cannot be activated or the whole of the ventricular muscles is in basically refractory period but there are some conditions in which either the pathway is prolonged you see this is a small pathway this pathway is a longer pathway so if the pathway is prolonged and the speed with which this uh, impulse is moving if this is shortened and if the the period the refractory period the the time for which the the muscles remain refractory if this refractory period is shortened all these conditions will lead to re-entry phenomena and circus movement now this thing can be introduced experimentally and it also occurred it also occur in ischemia due to acute coronary occlusion it also occur in uh, electric shock now this heart it has been stimulated at this point it has been stimulated at this point with an electric shock experimentally now what happens is that different impulses starts generating and there are some portions of the heart like the blue portions which are basically depolarized in which the impulse cannot move because these blue areas are in the refractory period the other white areas are not in the refractory period so the impulse can move in those areas now if this place if this portion of the heart is stimulated again and again what will happen that the impulse will continue to move round and round but it will not be able to move smoothly like this rather it will be moving around those areas which are in the refractory period and when it moves around the refractory period the its pathway will be prolonged its pathway will be prolonged or it will be a long pathway like this this is the normal pathway and this pathway will be prolonged and when this impulse moves for a long time for example in the normal pathway this impulse comes here and it dies out here but if there is um, an activation of the heart and there are some areas which are in the refractory period and some are not in the refractory period for example the blue areas in the refractory period and the white areas are not in the refractory period so the impulse will move for a long time and when the impulse moves for a long time its velocity will be decreased the velocity with which the heart the impulse moves here in the normal heart it will be decreased because it will be the impulse will be moving round and round because whenever this impulse encounter a place which is ref in refractory period it will move to another area which is not in the refractory period because the, the impulse is not dying out now due to this condition due to this condition the the refractory period of the heart the refractory period of the heart will also be shortened because when this area is in the refractory period when this area come out of the refractory period 
another area will be enter the refractory period now this area come out of the refractory period another area will come out of the refractory period so you can see that the refractory period is shortened because there is always some area where the impulse can go and when that area is out of the refractory period there is another area which is out of the refractory period so the impulse can go to that area so the pathway for the impulse conduction is prolonged the velocity of conduction is decreased because it is moving for a long time so the velocity decreases and due to multiple areas of refractoriness this uh, one refractory period uh, one area is going into the refractory period then then another it is coming out of the refractory period and then another area is going into the refractory period and then it is coming out of the refractory period due to that thing the refractory period as a whole is shortened there is short refractory period these three phenomena the long pathway the short refractory period or the decreased velocity the long pathway the decreased velocity and the short refractory period all these basically satisfy the criteria for the refractory um, the ventricular fibrillation and re-entry of the current re-entry of the current re-entry of current is simply the entry into that area which is out of refractory period if this area is in refractory period the impulse will not enter here but if the another area is out of refractory period it will enter that area so the impulse is not dying out rather it is re-entering and re-entering and re-entering leading to circus movement of the impulse and the impulse when encounter a refractory period area for example this area is in refractory period this area is another refractory period then this is in refractory period and this is in refractory period when the impulse will encounter these areas the impulse will divide into two then this impulse will encounter this area it will divide into another uh, two parts then this impulse will encounter another area it will divide again into two parts and this impulse if encounter this area it will divide again so there is a chain reaction of the impulses there is a chain reaction of the impulses these phenomena the chain reaction mechanism the re-entry and the circus movement of the impulse that is the movement of the impulse round and round around the heart and activation of some area of the heart muscle at one time and then activation of heart another heart area at another time all these lead to ventricular fibrillation all these lead to ventricular fibrillation and these are basically these are the criteria which basically are fulfilled due to acute coronary occlusion and when they are fulfilled then the impulse can uh, go into the chain reaction it the impulse can go into the re-entry and the impulse the impulse can go into the circus movement and the impulse the normal impulse which normally look like this it in the ventricular fibrillation it look like this you can see there is no proper pathway for the impulse conduction rather due to different areas of refractoriness the whole impulse has been divided into different parts of the heart some parts are activated in one time other part of the ventricle is activated in another time and there is no proper contraction and coordination of the heart muscles and all of this lead to ventricular fibrillation and there is no pumping of the blood and there is no cardiac output and this is basically a lethal uh, a little thing if it is not treated in few minutes and it can basically lead to death in few minutes so that's all about the uh, uh, chain reaction mechanism the re-entry phenomena and the circus movement which are basically basis for the ventricular fibrillation and they occur whenever the pathway for the impulse conduction is prolonged whenever the refractory period uh, is uh, shortened and whenever the velocity of conduction of impulse is decreased these phenomena are basically uh, fulfilled in acute coronary occlusion due to ischemia of different areas and these phenomena are also fulfilled uh, fulfilled due to electric shock shock of the heart and they may also be fulfilled in some other uh, pathologies which can cause ventricular fibrillation so that's all about ventricular fibrillation thanks a lot for watching the video